Good, good afternoon, everyone. Hope each of you are well and blessed. Dr. Joe, and welcome to another Village Chat. I'm so glad to see all of you. I know you guys are excited, and I hope you all are doing well on this beautiful, hot, humid, steamy summer Sunday evening. I'm talking about it is a baker out here on today, ladies and gentlemen. You guys tell me how you guys are doing. I hope you all are well and blessed. So glad that everyone is there. Listen, I'm excited, gang, because you all have finished up just about a week ago. We've already had our journey graduation last Saturday. We had our four-day turnup graduation last Wednesday, which was great. Um, we graduated the most people that we've ever graduated in the history of the process. We graduated... Uh, almost 1,200 people. Um, as it relates to both the journey group and the uh, 40 turnout group, both of you guys finished ahead of your predecessors. You outperformed them. In terms of our 40 turnout, you guys had the lowest attrition. We had a 91% um, efficiency rate, meaning 91% of people who started finished. We didn't lose that many people. With the highest rate of graduation, you had the highest weight loss average of any other group. Um, you had the highest giving rate. Because, so the seeds that you all sowed have made possible for all of the people who we're getting ready to work with and through, which is absolutely amazing. So, like I said before, you four-day turn uppers, risers, you guys are the top dogs. Y'all are bona fide legends in the group. Y'all in the number one position. I'm so proud of each of you. Um, it's it's amazing. We got a whole lot to talk about. Um, I'm going to first talk about what Village Chat is because there are a lot of you who are not a part of the village yet. Um, I'm going to let you know what this conversation is about. I'm going to let you know about my amazing guest that we're so excited to have with us on this evening. And then once we finish the conversation with her, I have some important information about the next class that you don't want to miss. So to all of you guys who are watching your part of Village, shout out to you all. To those of you who are not graduates of the four-day turnup, you're newbies, let me know who you are so I can give you a uh, shout out. Let me shout you out. Okay, gang. All right. So if you guys are watching this for the first time, you have no clue who I am. You don't know what the four day turn up is. You don't know what the journey is. You don't know nothing about nothing. The four day turn up and the journey are two processes that fall under the umbrella of 40 days with Dr. Joe. And it is not a weight loss program. It is a personal transformative process. We're about changing people. We're about people being in the environment of and for change to help them become the individuals that they need to be. The byproduct is losing weight. The byproduct is becoming the best version of yourself. The byproduct are individuals getting off prescription drugs, reversing diabetes, lowering hypertension, and a litany of other things. But it's not about the physical. All of those things are a byproduct of something that happens on the inside of me. Shout out to Jennifer. Uh, newbie, uh, Danette Morrison, shout out, uh, Tammy, shout out Coach Sabrina, all right, Geisha, all right, shout out Michelle. So a part of what we call our village, and our village is basically the community that we foster here uh, once people are kind of coming through the process. It's it's the place of uh, of safety. It's the place of protection is the place of support, etc. And when we do these village chats, it's all about the story of the individuals who are a part of the conversations. While we were going through the, the actual process, I was inviting people who were actually in the process, folks who were in the four day turn up, people who were in the journey. But now that we finished it, there are a lot of people who desire to be in the village. And what I do from time to time is we'll make different posts on YouTube, et cetera, and we'll ask people 
to tell and to share their stories. And we take these individuals who have stories and we invite them to come along. So on this evening, I have an amazing guest who's going to be with us on today. She goes by the name of Mary Morrison. She has an amazing story. I'm not going to tell her story at all. That's why we want her to be a part. She has some challenges that she's been experiencing, and it's her hopes and desires that our village can hopefully be that assistant assistance to her and that supplement for her to hopefully help her through her process. Now, in listening to her story, I believe wholeheartedly that what our village brings is spot on for what she's looking for. And as you guys know, it's not going to be an easy journey, but it's going to be a very, very doable journey. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to uh, introduce to you all Miss Mary Morrison. Mary, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, Dr. Joe. How are you today? Wonderful. So glad that you agreed to be my guest. How are you feeling on this hot, hot Sunday? Hot. <laughs> Isn't it hot? <laughs> I'm inside and I'm still hot. Yeah. Oh, still hot. I know, I know, I know. Well, I'm glad you're on with us. I want to just jump right into your story. Let's take some time and just tell our listeners uh, who you are and like where you're from and just tell us a little bit about yourself so we can get to know you. I am Mary Honeybee Morrison. I'm a New York Times bestselling author. I have 29 books in print and I'm originally from New Orleans and I currently live in Atlanta, Georgia. So I don't know how soon you want me to jump in with the health issues or if we're doing a Q&A. So I'm going to follow your lead. OK, that sounds good. Well, let's stick with that. So you're an author. You've got 29 yes. books. Yes, 29. Wow. So how long have you been an author and a writer? For 21 years. OK. Now, how, how did you get into that? That's interesting. You, you don't find authors every day. And that's very, very cool. So tell us like, tell us a story about how you got into that, as well as the type of uh, uh, books you write. OK, for me, it was a relationship gone bad, which I know that a lot of people can relate to. And so the relationship did not work out, but he was still my soulmate. And so for seven years, I said, I'm going to write that story. Soulmates Dissipate was the title. That is the title of my first book. And I really enjoyed the journey of writing about what happened. So I know a lot of people want to write a book and it's a great thing to do, but it requires a lot of sitting mm -hmm. unless you have a standing desk. And I have been sitting for 21 years. So wow. Interesting. To say, <laughs> off and on, off and on, but book for a lot. It takes, it requires a lot. So that's where I really started. And I've always loved English. It's just something I wanted to do. And I just kept writing and I write in a series for most of my books. I write adult fiction and I also write um, erotica. So my books are definitely intended for adults. And my son, Jesse Bird, is an international award winning children's author. So we got you covered either way. <laughs> awesome. That is great. Yes. So you just you just pass that on to him. So so adult fiction and erotica. Yes. Now, I, I can I can guess what erotica is, but can you kind of tell us a bit more like what that genre is? Erotica really delves into the sexual aspect of relationships. Okay. And sometimes that's really like pleasant and good and sometimes it's not. I try to do it from a point of view where I'm actually teaching you something as you read along because a lot of people are, oh, I need to try that or I try to make relationships better in the erotic uh, books that I write and I've been successful with doing that. But if you like a little exploration, I wouldn't call it like Fifty Shades of Grey because there's nothing really dark about it. There's this situations that happen. So I really like that. And um, I like to bring people closer together. I, I explore toys in my writing. So sometimes people don't understand things and I'll break down kegels. I'll break down the seven secretion points, but I do it in, the, well, the woman has seven, men have one. But anyway, I do it in such a way that you learn something as you read what I write. And that's in every single book, no matter which one, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. 
Well, that is just awesome. I, I could sit up here and ask you like a hundred thousand questions about that. So that's that is so cool. Um, we have a very, very wide array of people from different walks. Now, uh, what's amazing is like when I'm sitting here talking to you and then knowing your story, I would never put the two together. I never would put, and I'm certain that you'll talk about your story, but in your own way, just share with us some of the story, some some of the challenges that you've had that you're dealing with, so we can talk about that. Hopefully, unearth it and and, and get a plan of action for you. I'm excited about a plan of action because it is time. It's time for me to really take action, take my health seriously. I have asked myself, Dr. Joe, I've asked myself the question, how did I get here? Like, how did I get here health wise? Meaning from the girl that was in stilettos, if you knew me, if you worked in the office with me, when I went to the office, tennis shoes were for the gym only. <laughs> Right. won't find me in a pair of tennis shoes um, then. But now that's pretty much all I can wear. Now, I don't know if you watch Wendy Williams or anything like that. She's always in tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. Never, ever imagined that that would be me. Now, I was diagnosed with diabetes when I was 35. Mm -hmm. I am now 56, soon to be 57. And... So I knew, right? My A1C, when they tell you you're pre-diabetic and wasn't so bad, hoovering around 150, you know, and the doctor's like, just watch your diet. I ain't watching my diet. I can eat whatever I want to eat, you know? And so I ate the dough bears cake and I ate all the, the sweets and I love to drink. I'm a writer. I work at the bar. Literally, I take my laptop to the bar and work and I'm pushing back cocktails and having a good time. And then all of a sudden, fast forward, I wake up one morning and it didn't happen overnight, but I noticed it. It seemed like overnight, Dr. Joe. It's like I just now I struggle to walk. Um, I have a very dear friend, Sherry New, whom she is great. She will walk with me five miles and she could probably walk five miles in 30 minutes. But right. if it takes me an hour and 30 minutes, right. she will take that time to do that with me, but I realized over 21 years and all of these books you see behind me, I've done all of that. I've created the fan base. My fans love me, you know, mm -hmm. but at the same time, what about me? Right. What, what about me? So during COVID, right before COVID, I was diagnosed with stage one breast cancer mm. and that was a challenge. And right. so friends and family was there for me to support me. Um, I'm very confident in myself, so I've never worn a prosthetic. I don't feel like I need it. You either like me or you don't, uh, which most people do, I will say. Mm -hmm. And that part is not the problem. It's not the issue. But Dr. Joe, chemo. I was like, well, dang, on the cancer could have killed me, but the chemo, I'm not sure if I can survive it. Right, you know, right. It's taking me down and I feel bad and... You know, not every day, my, my spirit, I try to keep that part up, mm -hmm. but the things that chemo does to the body, then they said, oh, you need 30 rounds of radiation. I'm like, are you serious? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Are you serious? And so the only reason I did radiation was because I was feeling like I don't want to give you, or I don't want to have a reason to say, dang it, I wish I would have done that, you right. know? Right. So. I opted for that double, even though I had it on the right side. I said, just take both of them. Mm -hmm. And now they want me to take an astrazole, which is a pill you take right. after cancer uh, for five years. She's like, oh, you have um, your bone mass is good. Your bone density is good. You have 10% to give. You're definitely going to lose 10% of your bone mass over five years. Then she comes back and say, oh, I'm talking about the oncologist. Uh-huh. Your bone density is great. So you can take this for 10 years because you have 20% to give. I said, and do what? Need a hip replacement? Right. All my mm -hmm. bones? It's mm -hmm. like, lose all my teeth? I mean, mm -hmm. what are we talking about? So I decided I wasn't going to take the anastrozole. Mm -hmm. I didn't. But I also believe, Dr. Joe, that what we ask God in the universe for, God will give us. Now, what you do with it is going to be totally up to you. So- an herbalist doctor came in and 
I've been taking herbs and that helped me. And then I was in a car accident, but it was a blessing in disguise because the chiropractor, he doesn't crack necks and all that. I have a, a one who believes in non-traditional medicine. I believe in non-traditional medicine. Mm -hmm. He's helping me. And then when Lily Ortiz told me about you, I was like, oh, Jesus, God is giving you everything you need and want to get better. The rest is just going to be up to me. I'm so ready. I am ready for you. I am so ready. All right. Excellent. Well, I, what a what a story. I want I want to do something different, but I want you to repeat this affirmation after me, if you will. OK, I, Mary, I, Mary, will be successful, will be successful in taking my life back in taking my life back. OK, that's one time. Let's do I, it again. I, Mary, I, Mary, will be successful will be successful in taking my life back in taking my life back all right three last time i mary i mary will be successful will be successful in taking my life back in taking my life back i repeat after me my future my future will be better will be better than my past than my past. Again, my future. My future will be better. Will be better than my past. Than my past. My future last time. My future will be better. Will be better than my past. Than my past. Last one. God has great things for me. God has great things for me. God has great things for me. God has greater things for me. God has great things for me. God has great things for me. Do you accept all of those things, Mary? I do. Okay. Well, I want you to know you've already put that in the atmosphere. I want to touch and agree with you virtually. And I want everyone who's in the chat group, who's watching this live, who watches this archive to be on one accord. Uh, Mary, I think you represent something far greater than yourself. I think you represent a lot of other people who have illnesses, who have setbacks. And to me, I look upon you as a combination lock. You know, you have a combination lock and you've got the different scrollers like zero to nine, zero to nine. And what I see for you is you're just missing that one last little number that needs to click. Mm -hmm. And I believe in my heart of hearts, and I'm not just saying this, that what we have and what this village offers is exactly what you need to get your health back, to show you that your future is far greater than your past, and to show you that God is with you and God is getting ready to do things. I think all of the things that you've done are great and should be applauded, but I don't think you have any idea on what's to come. And that's what I believe. All right. Do you receive that? I receive that. Okay. All right. And what yeah. I want to do is I want to ask you a couple of questions. All right. I'm going to ask you a question and I want you and I'm, I'm going to write down your answer. I'm going to give you a question, Mary, and I'm, go I'm going to have you rate how well you think you are in this category of your life on a scale of one to 10. 10 means that I got that. I'm perfect in it. One is I'm the worst. And of course, you know, the higher you are on that on that zero to 10, the stronger the score and the lower. I want you to be honest in answering this. I'm going to ask this, we're going to do some calculations and then I'm going to come back. And we're going to continue to, to talk. Is that OK? Yes. OK. All right. How disciplined of a person do you think you are holistic, holistically, not just in the things that you love, but how disciplined of a person do you think you are scale of one to ten? Five. Okay. Okay. How committed of a person are you? When you start to do something, you see it to the end. Once again, not the things that you love, not your passion, but just as a person. Oh. A 4.5. All right. Let's just round it up to five to be clean. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's go to five. All right. I appreciate that. Actually, all right. Five. Okay. All right. How structured is your life? If you had to look upon the structure that you have in your life, uh, 
how structured of a person are you or is your life? I will say right now it is probably a three because I feel like I'm all over the place. Like no two days are the same. Like okay. I might get up and hit the gym, but after that, that's it. Okay. All right. Your ability to follow through. When you start something, you finish it. Follow through. I would say an eight. Okay. All right, and last one, how motivated are you to change your life? I am a nine on that because okay. I'm extremely motivated. All right, I'm gonna add that up, 10, 13. All right, eight is 21, 21, nine. All right, when I add up all of your numbers that you've given, your score is a 30. That's five categories. You take that 30 and I multiply it by two because it's five, zero to 10, and your score is a 60. Now, you're probably wondering, well, what does that mean? Well, it's kind of like school, Mary. <laughs> That's uh, what I was afraid uh, of. All right, right, okay, all right. If a, <laughs> if a is a 90 to 100, all right, no judgment. A B is an 80 to a 90. A C is a 70 to an 80. A D is a 60 to a 70. Now, the reason why this is good is because this gives you insight to what you need to be focused on before we start. All right. And the thing about it is these are the areas of life that people who want to change have to address if they desire to change. If a person wants to get off of drugs, if a person wants to become successful in their business, if a person wants to lose weight, if a person wants to stop drinking, it doesn't matter what the transformation that they want to manifest in their lives. Discipline, commitment, structure, follow through and motivation are pillars that we all need to take our lives from where it is to where we want to be. Now, all I want you to do is I want you just to um, do you have a pen and a piece of paper? OK. OK. And what I'm going to do, Mary, I'm going to restate to you what you said. And I want you just to take these after our conversation and be thinking about it as we lead up to the session. Things of that, of, of that nature. OK. OK. All right. The first area was discipline and you and you rated yourself as a five. Okay. The second area was commitment and you rated yourself a 4.5, but we rounded it up to five. Okay. Okay. The third area is structure and you gave yourself a three. The fourth area was follow through and you gave yourself an eight. And the last one was motivated. Or, how, or motivation, and you gave yourself a nine. Okay. So okay. 10, 3, that's 13. 13 plus 8 is 21. And then plus 9 is the 30 times 2 is the 60. So I just, I'm just sharing with you where that is. All I, You don't have to do anything special with that, but this is great that we're talking about this because everything that the process offers is exactly what Mary needs to go from where you are now with you. Let me tell you what the magic, the magic key for you is what we kind of discussed off camera is reversing diabetes. Okay. If Mary does, excuse me, when Mary does okay. what she needs to do to reverse her diabetes, to lower her medication, get off of insulin, your whole life is going to change. And let me tell you wow. something. Cancer is a systemic type of issue, meaning that it is if you have cancer of the breast or of the prostate or wherever it is, it doesn't mean that that area is flawed or something's wrong with it. It just means that that's the area where the cancer has manifested. The true issue is systemically through the body. OK, if we rid your body of, of, di of diabetes, your ability 
to thrive and to stay healthy is going to be next level because when you when you're a diabetic you have a metabolic malfunction metabolically you're not doing what you need to do in terms of your physical anatomy your body isn't functioning as it needs to but when you rid yourself of diabetes the body begins to function as it needs to and what else happens the immune system responds as it needs to so a healthy immune system mary is what keeps cancer cells in check regardless of people having cancer or not we all have cancer cells but the immune system keeps it in balance so what i want you to understand is everything that you need this process is going to address it and folks who've gone through the process in the comment section are going to be able to testify that exactly what mary needs is what she's going to be the recipient of how do you feel about that how do i feel about it how do you feel about that mary <laughs> i'm excited to get started i am um the whole commitment part of it you know it's like i know i said i was a five because there's certain things i can commit to and i'm all in right but it usually really centers around completing a task outside of myself right but the commitment within to make sure that i'm a hundred percent that's the missing half if i were to explain it that's the missing half i'll start um herbs and then i'll stop and then i'll start something else and then i'll stop so this time it's like no stopping i just have to get rid of this because i'm due for surgery on september 3rd to get reconstruction but the doctor already said if you're not below an eight i'm not going to touch you mm -hmm. and in my mind i keep saying i'm going to be below an eight i'm going to be below an eight and wow. my numbers have been running pretty good when i do all the right things i do fall off every once in a while right Right. But I can't afford to fall off anymore because I have to take control of this. Right. No. And you will. Now, let me, let me give you an example of what okay. your life has been like and what it's going to be when you come through this process in terms of working on you. Let's say, for instance, because you're in Atlanta and I said, Mary, I need you to go from Atlanta to this sad address in Santa Monica, uh, California. If I told you that and I tell you, you got a week to get there, Mary. All right. You go. You probably Google. You, you'll get a car. You'll rent a car. Maybe you drive your own car. You'll plan your route. You got to stay here. You got to stay there. And you would make your way. You could you get there? Yes. What the process does is in a story like uh, analogy. We're going to pick you up in the car. Okay. We're going to chart out your trip. We're going to tell you where you're going to stay when you get to the hotel we're going to be there to check you in we're going to show you what to eat we're going to play what you want to listen to on the radio and we're going to be certain that you arrive in santa monica safe and sound having everything that you need now if you can understand those two differences that's what the village is like the village or the process that you want to go through is going to give you everything that you need to be successful you're not going to have an option about being all over the place because the structure is built in. You're not going to have the option of if I follow through because it's going to be accountability. You're not going to have the option to give up because you're going to have a group. You're going to have a, a leader. You're going to have buddies in this intrinsic system that has been built over the last 10 years to give you everything. The best thing is everything that you're going to be doing. You're not going to have to pay a dime for it. All right. The people who come before you have already sown to make ways for people just like you. So when you come into this process, Mary, it's not just about Mary getting value for something that she's paid. It's about Mary taking advantage of this position that other people have sold so Mary can come through. So wow. you get a different level of accountability. How does that make you feel? That's amazing. That makes me feel very blessed. Good. Well, you got people all in the comment section, pull it for you, you know, all types of things. Now, um, let me ask you something. Do you feel that for six weeks when we start this next process that you can be committed for six, that you can give me six weeks of your best? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. 
Lastly, are you committed to be 100% committed in this process? I am, yes. Well, Mary, listen, I, I think you're going to do great. We've already put it in the atmosphere. I think that everything that you're looking to get out of this process, you are. I think it's going to be a great, great man positive manifestation for your health. And all we got to do is uh, it, it is it is progress through. Now, let me let me tell you all you need to do, because when we get off, I'm going to follow up with a couple of things. Hopefully you can still tune in while we're uh, going forward about the next class. The next class um, getting in the group is key. And I'm going to tell you everything that you need to do to do that. And it's one of those things that you got to trust the process. Just trust that what we are formulating is something that may take a lot of people say, well, why can I start tomorrow? Well, it's kind of one of those things. It takes us a while to get people where they need to be, to assimilate people and to get your mind right. Because when your mind is right, then everything else is history. How does that sound, Mary? That sounds phenomenal. Okay. Awesome. Yes. All right. Well, you've been an amazing guest. I Tell all the people how they can contact you. I'm sure you've got uh, websites, you've got social media platforms. Tell us all about how we can connect with you and support what you do, Mary, because I know people are listening. The easiest way to connect with me is on any of the social medias. I am Celeb Honeybee. So that's C-E-L-E-B-H-O-N-E-Y-B. -E -E that's on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, wherever you are. Is that that's right? That's who I am, Celeb Honeybee. Okay. And my website, if you want to know more about my books and who I am, is MaryMorrison.com. I'm going to put that on the screen. Is correct? Thank you. That is correct. And if you don't mind me giving my son a shout out at Jesse sure. B Creative, yeah. you can follow him too. Jesse B is in boy creative.com. That's Jesse B. Absolutely. Give your son a shout out. That's great. Yes. Young black man doing some wonderful things for kids. All right. So on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok gang, this is how you reach out to her, Celeb Honeybee. Yes. Right. And if you all want to look at all of her books and see what she's done, her major hub, you can go to www.marymorrison.com. Yes, that's correct. Is that correct? That's correct. Well, Mary, you've been an amazing, amazing, amazing. All right, I mean, let me ask you this. If someone is going to get a book and they say, oh, I've, I've heard this awesome lady named Mary Morrison, I want to get one of her books. What's the first one they need to buy? That's a good question. <laughs> I write in a series. So Soulmates Dissipate is the first book, the very first one. Um, so I'm going to recommend either that one or the last one is a standalone. And it's called Careful What You Click For. So I'm also going to like journal this on my social pages. So if you want to follow me and see how I'm doing and support me, Dr. Joe, I'm also going to put this on my social media pages so my friends and fans can follow what I'm doing. That's awesome. So soulmates dissipate. Yes. And be careful what you click for. Just careful. Careful what you click for. Careful what you click for. Yes. All right. Excellent. Yeah. Can you show, show, us, show us the cover. Let, let's see it. I, we wanna, okay. yeah. So this is careful, careful what you click what for. You click for. Excellent. Yeah. You have soulmates dissipate back there? I do. If I can scoot, scoot over here. Sure, but, sure, sure. Um, I will reach it. I will get to it. And this is soulmates dissipate. So that was the one that started. A conservative cover. I told them not to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that it's great. an adult book. Okay. Well, you've been great. This has been Thank a you. pleasure speaking with you. I look forward to working with you. Uh, and I look and I really meant that all of those affirmations that you stated, I believe and trust that you're going to manifest those things in your life. You said that you did. We're touching and agreeing. We're going to put that out in the atmosphere. We're going to work hard to do that, Mary. I think I think your best days are ahead and I can't wait to see what they are. Thank okay. you. Be blessed now. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thank you for being okay. part. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> What an excellent, 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 excellent 
interview Miss Mary Morrison. And um, what's amazing is, let me tell you what's amazing. What's amazing is when we reached out to Mary, I had no clue she was an author. I had no clue she was as accomplished of a professional writer as she is. I was drawn to her to her story. And it was in the process of, her, of us trying to book her and get her on to share with our village that I found that out. Now, the point that I'm making in that is you've got people in every walk of life, in every level of life, in every in, 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 in politics, in business, in religion, in medicine, in healthcare, who have stories whereby it's something that's happening that's preventing them from becoming their best possible self. Now, what you all have to understand, understand how the enemy works. Now, let's talk spirituality for a moment. Let's talk about spirituality. Each of you who are watching this are here for a purpose and a reason. There's something you're supposed to do. There's something you're supposed to accomplish. There's something you are supposed to endure and manifest in your life. You, me, everybody. And that divine purpose that all of us have, the enemy is trying to mitigate each of us from doing that. How many people believe that? How many people believe what I just said? How many people believe, A, I have a purpose for my life, and B, I'm aware, Dr. Joe, that there are spiritual entities and things that don't want me to do that? How many people can honestly admit that? How many people? Now, if you accept that, A, that you have a purpose, B, that you know that somebody or something is trying to take you, if you look at your life, you'll see how it happens. Think about all the times you were headed in the right direction and distractions came. Bad relationships came. Divorce that almost took you out. Bad habits that you had. And it happens to all of us and it happens in different ways. Now, what you all have to understand is we all have different weaknesses. We all have different ways that the enemy infiltrates. This is what I want you to hear. Some of us, we have a weakness with having proclivities towards, we have addictive personalities or we deal with esteem issues. Sometimes the enemy gets through to us through our relationships, through our childhood, through our marriages, through our sexuality, through our surroundings. But in a situation like what you just saw with Mary, the enemy is trying to mitigate her purpose through her health. That wasn't me. You just listened to what she said. But how many believe that we serve a God that will put around us everybody and everything that we need to overcome the enemy. You, you understand that? As accomplished as Mary is, I was not aware of her writings. Now I am and can't wait to read her books. Like I told you, I didn't know she was an author. I didn't know 
she she had written 29 books. I didn't know that. But God allowed our paths to cross. So let me bring it full circle to all of you who just graduated, risers. Some things in life are bigger than you and me. But what y'all have done is when you came through the process, when people saw your results, stay with me, when you told your family members and your friends, when you sowed into the process, God used all of that to bring it to the footsteps of those who needed it the most. That's what you're a part of. You are a part of divine intervention and don't even realize. It. You are a part of Mary and other people like Mary who need what this process brings and made it possible, you. That's what you've done. You are an organism that is a part of change for people you don't even know. Now think about it like that. That's why it's successful, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we get results. That's why people are healing themselves. Because the spiritual ethos of our village is one that is conducive for the manifestation of what God has already promised God's children. Let marinate on that. You see. See, you didn't realize, you don't even realize that God has used each of you as testimonies who didn't even say nothing. Shout out to Lily Ortiz who told Mary about it. Who would have known that that would have happened? Who would have known it? You sold into that. You. You did it. Mary doesn't have to pull out her insurance card. She doesn't need to make a copay because of you. She doesn't have to have to go in the debt or, 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 or go to her savings account because of you. It doesn't matter if she can or if she has the financial ability to do that or not. That's not the point. The point is you who have come through have provided a way that Mary and other people like Mary who want and need to change their lives can and will. So now to all of you, Mary, I hope you're still watching. And I hope there are others of you who are watching this who are interested in, in being a part of the next group. Understand the pressure is on you now. See, most times when you pay for something, when you pay, you expecting something after that. You expecting good service. You expecting uh, good food. You're expecting a pleasant stay at a hotel. You're expecting the work to be done at your home. But understand, it's nothing for y'all to expect. It's the flip side now because now that folk have come through, we expecting y'all to do the work. We are expecting y'all to put in the time, the effort, because folks who've come before you have already sown because they believe in it. So if there's anybody out there watching this, you speak over your life right now. Come on, and, and, and you know what? Let me tell you something. I don't know what... If you, I don't know if everybody is of faith or, 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 or of not. I'm not asking what your religion is. I'm not asking who or what you believe in. But we're going to touch and agree right now that there's something or somebody out there bigger than us that controls this thing called life. 
that knows our tomorrow, that has destined us to be who we're supposed to be. And when we invoke those things and put our minds together to head in the right direction, that I can change trajectories of people who are trying to eliminate me. I want you to speak over your life right now and say, and, and, and to any of you who need it, I want you to say right now, my life is getting ready to change. Come on, my life, put it in the, I want you to type it. My life is getting ready to change. Make a declarative statement. Don't act like you're at the mall and you see the girl and you say, hey, you, you think you could give me your phone number? No, no, no. No. Make a declarative statement. Give her the phone. Put your number in my phone. I'll call you later. Be declarative. Be aggressive. My life is getting ready to change. Come on and speak it. Come on. Come on. Come on. My life is getting ready to change. Say it like you mean it. Mean it like you say it. My life is getting ready to to change. That's it. You have to speak. You have to put things in the atmosphere. When I, when I get, when, when you get in a car that has a navigational system, you got to type in your destination, your coordinates. You got to type them in. That's what we're doing. When you're speaking those things, you're putting in coordinates. You're putting in coordinates. Come on. My life is getting ready to change. My life is getting ready to change. Let's speak this. I want you to write this in the chat group. Nothing will stop me from my destiny. Come on. Nothing will stop me from my destiny. 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 Last one, I will be victorious. Come on, I will be victorious. Put that in the, in the comment section. I will be victorious. Not I think, I will. I will. I will. I will. Does it mean it's going to be easy? No. What does the word of the Lord say? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You know what that means? That means things are going to come against me, but then they're, they're not going to be successful. I may get weak. I may, I may want to give up. I may want to throw in the towel. I may have obstacles. Come on. I will be victorious. I will be victorious. I see you, Mary. I see you. I will be victorious. I will be victorious. God put a talent in Mary. He gave her a gift like he's given all of you. When she was in her mother's womb, the most high was setting her up. And ever since it's been in there, the enemy has tried to take it. The enemy tries to take it from us. Through what? Distractions. That's all the enemy has. Not to be too heavy in village chat, but when you read the word of God in the Old Testament, the first character of the of the of the devil was the serpent, the snake. Come on, Dr. Joe. But you got to understand, see, we we associate the snake to a person that's low down. But if you have any understanding of ancient writing and literature, the snake was a symbol of wisdom.
The snake was a symbol of health. That's why you see, it. see DNA looks like the twin helix, the twin snakes. When you look at the ambulance or medicine, you see the staff with the snakes coming up around it. The serpent was always known as being wise. That's why the Bible says that he was the most subtle and cunning. Think about what that means. That means the enemy is smart. The enemy is manipulative. The enemy is crafty. Why is that important? Because the enemy cannot force you to do anything. Think about the first interaction between the serpent in the Old Testament and how humankind sinned. The serpent didn't make Eve take the fruit. He 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 had to he he had to spit game. Do I have any Bible readers? He had to he had to be manipulative. He said, "Oh, you can take of the fruit." He said, "Because if you take of the fruit, he says, ye will be as gods, knowing the difference between good and evil. That why, that's why the Lord said, don't take of the, of the, of the forbidden what? The, the tree of what? Knowledge. See, see, Satan, he didn't force it. He was just talking, telling them what they wanted to hear. Go ahead and take it. Go ahead and take it. Because you, you will be as a god. Knowing, you see, see, the, the, the enemy is good at one thing, distracting you, taking you away from God's word, taking you away from God's promises, causing you to live a life that's jacked up and messed up and you don't even realize how you got to the place that you are. That's a byproduct of the enemy. But see, God has already set us up. There are forces, just like there are evil forces against you, there are positive forces. Is somebody watching me right now? Your whole life is about to be changed through this process, and you may not have even planned to even watch this. You sit up here trying to realize who this big headed man is on your screen. Now, let me tell you something. In the closed group, and I'm done, give me about seven minutes. Y'all graduated last week. Stay with me. You did well. I checked in on you yesterday. You got on the scale. Y'all still losing weight like you're in the process. Dr. Joe, I'm two pounds down, three pounds down, four pounds down since last week. What's the point? You are doing it without me. The power has always been in you. You don't need the process. <laughs> the process was just to show you you didn't need it. <laughs> you don't need a program. All you needed was to know how and how to believe in yourself. That's the power of the village. It's not the damn diet. It's not the diet. It's the ethos called the village that you are in that is capitulated and built in a way that gets you to the point to when you believe in yourself. That's the power. It's always been on the inside of you. But you got to keep pressing. You can't deviate from what I taught you. 
You got to stay on top of it. You got to keep grinding. Keep learning when you fall down, when you mess up, when the scale doesn't say what you wanted to say. Assess. Let that lion come out of you. Look at that number. Make the adjustment. Get the results. Wear that lion skin just like I taught you. And all of you who are sitting down saying, oh, I want to go through that. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. But don't waste my time. Do not waste my time. I got folk coming at me from every angle trying to go through. Don't waste my time. If you want them show up folks who just want to show up and manifest something, please, please stay exactly where you are. Let me tell y'all something who want to go through. Tomorrow at journeylife.tv. We've gone through this one. Go over it again. Journeylife.tv. This is how you start the process of going through the 40-day turnup. You go to that website. When you wake up in the morning, and it's going to be a drop down. You're, I'm sure it'll be on the screen. Very easy for y'all to see. It'll be a pre-registration link. You fill that out. That does not guarantee your seat. All that does is put you on the list so with me and my team can start communicating with you. Because at the end of August is when you're going to have the pre-orientational video. But Dr. I'm ready to start tomorrow. You can't start tomorrow. Well, I really need to. I need help. Well, you've been jacked up long before now. This is the final session. We're going to do it right. We're going to do it right. You're going to pre-register at this link. We're going to keep pre-registration up as long as we can until we get all the way to our pre-registration, pre-orientation, excuse me. It'll be at the end of, of August. But see, all of the information about, well, what do I do next will be gotten to you when you go to this site tomorrow and sign up. When you sign up, be certain that you confirm your subscription. Well, Dr. Joe, I didn't get nothing. Go to your junk or your spam folder. Click what you need to click. Do what you need to do to be certain that that email is confirmed because this is how we're going to communicate with you. When the pre-orientation comes at the end of the month, that's when you'll have to go through the modules. It's several of them. We take people through a process to be certain they're hungry, they're willing, and they're able. If you're a person, you've never been to college, if you're not a great writer, if you if you may be elderly, don't become discouraged. As a matter of fact, my elderlies do better than anybody else. All you need is the desire to want to do it. If you got to get somebody to help you take it through, get them. Period. Two. If you are a repeat, do not pre-register. What's a repeat, Dr. Joe? You've gone through the turn up before or the journey. Don't you waste spots pre-registering. Sit your behind down somewhere because I taught y'all just as good and talk everybody else. You've taken up space. Now, let me tell you, for those of y'all who think you slick, go ahead and pre-register. And all we're going to do is by the time pre-orientation comes and we run the list, we're going to find who you are and put you out. So all you're going to do is hype yourself up, get in the group, be all excited. Thank you, made it. And we're going to snip you. You're wasting space. But Dr. Joe, I really need it. Well, you come through it. What's more important? You to come through again because your gut and butt didn't listen to what Dr. Joe told you the first time? Or should we take the time with somebody who has not come through, who's actually going to listen and who's actually going to make it a lifestyle? My point exactly. Sit your behind down, gut and butt. 
We're working on something that hopefully in the future sessions, we'll be able to let people come through in a different way, but that session ain't gonna be in 2021. Sit down, gut and butt. Lastly, and I'm done. For those of you who want more content, you want more information, you want to connect with us, follow us on Instagram at Journey Life TV. Journey Life TV. They got pictures before and afters. We got a lot of videos, a lot of great things there. Y'all have been an amazing group. We had such a great village chat on tonight. We got some more exciting things coming for you. Y'all will hear more about it. We got our own reality show coming. Shout out to the Transform team, to the cast. We're wrapping things up. You'll be hearing hopefully within the next 14 days about when the first episode is going to be released. We're excited about that. And then that way, as we're getting ready for the next session, we're going to be having our own reality show to watch week after week. It's going to be epic. Epic. I well, thank y'all for coming out. God bless you. Shout out to Mary Morrison. Y'all check her out. Check her out on Instagram, Facebook. Check her out on her website. Let's support her. Let's keep her in our thoughts and prayers as well as going to keep all of you in our thoughts and prayers as we continue to move forward. Y'all be well, be blessed, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.